Hey, welcome back. Always good to see you. But you know, I know some of you are, are flight students or, or your pilots and you're moving along in your career trying to get someplace. And maybe you want to be a CFI, a certificated flight instructor. And you're like, but why am I listening to this old bald guy who's all gray and he's out of touch. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I heard you. I get it. So today we're going to visit with a friend of mine, just a wonderful CFI from up in Pennsylvania, Hunter Timco Boats, because it's worth hearing another perspective and hers is remarkable. So stick with me for just a minute and we're going to hear from Hunter and what she has to say about her journey from being a student pilot to being a professional pilot and even where she's going in the future. So hang around. By the way, the like button is still right down there. You can click it anytime you want. And if you subscribe to the channel, I'll just be so happy you won't be able to believe it. Hunter, I'm really glad that you took time out to talk to me today. First of all, where are you? What are you doing at this moment? At this moment, is I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I just got off of work. It was a very hot day today, so I'm happy to be inside from the uh, CF life that was outside today. So you've been flying with students today? Yes, I had two flights earlier, um, and right now I'm. It slowed down a little bit because I have a couple people go back to school. But about three weeks ago, I mean, I was doing four or five flights a day, five days a week. So it's nice to have a little break and get some, you know, relaxation time. Definitely. I get it. Now, tell me if you would, what lit the fire for you? Because I met you, I think it was a couple of years ago, and I apologize. I'm very old, so <laughs> calendars don't always work for me. But I think you were getting your commercial or you just got your commercial. What lit the fire and said, I think I want to be a pilot? So growing up, my dad's a pilot currently. Um, he's been flying for about 25 years now. And it was always something that I, honestly, when I would go on a vacation, I was more excited to be on the airplane than I was to actually at the destination. Um, and he'd always send me pictures and just all these different, you know, you know, points from his life. And it just always sparked my interest. But when college came around, wasn't necessarily ready to go down that. But once I finally was in a place that I knew I could fully commit myself, it was it was a no brainer. And I just went crazy from that point on and kept flying. And here we are today. Now, it was about a year ago, if I'm not mistaken, that you made that transition from paying to fly mm -hmm. to getting paid to fly yeah. as a CFI. Was that like a watershed moment? Is that is that like a major um, deal in your career from your perspective? Oh, absolutely. Um, I was very, I must have been hesitant to be a CFI. Um, it's funny, the complete 180 where I'm at now, it's brought so much joy to my life. I'm so thankful I did it. But I was definitely very nervous. But once I finally made that transition and I finally got to do those first couple flights with, you know, students and I'm with learners, I'm over here being that flight instructor. It was like, like I knew I knew a lot of stuff, but when you actually like put in the position to show people, you know, your capabilities and a brand new pilot, it's very rewarding to see like, holy cow, like hard work does pay off. And here I am now just, it was definitely like a mind blowing water to your you know, crying. Absolutely. That was actually going to be a question I wanted to ask you. I mean, you've kind of achieved the dream. You're <laughs> getting paid to fly. You're building time and you don't have to pay for it. But I was wondering, are you finding satisfaction in being a CFI? Because a lot of people view it as almost a penance I have to serve to get where I'm going. And right. as you know, people like me, we've, we've spent our whole career as a CFI. I have a different perspective, but it sounds like you're actually enjoying it and you get yeah. something out of it. Oh, absolutely. Um, I've had up to this date four first solos and uh, four check ride passes, and I'm almost more excited than they are when they do it. I'm like the mom in the corner, like when they're on their first solo, I'm almost as nervous as they are. But like once it's finally done, it's beyond rewarding. Yeah. And it's seeing them the way light or the way they light up when they finally get that like awesome, like, yeah, that first solo moment or something. And like, I didn't fly the plate for them. You know, that's all their success, but it's nice to have been like a part of it and like help them get that, like that dream one in a lifetime, you know, moment. Absolutely. Yeah. That first solo, I still remember the first person I signed off the it solo. Was and crazy. There was, there's a little anxiety there. You're, yeah. you're like, I'm 97% sure they're okay. <laughs> it's that extra 3% that you're just like, Oh, I, I had a student, he made, the, it was a couple weeks ago, he made the perfect decision, but it was the first time I had it happen. He did a go around on his second uh, landing and my heart was pounding because it was, it was good he did that. He did exactly what he should have. But I was like, is he going to get in his head? Is he going to, 
be able to come down. And he did two more beautiful landings after that. It was no problem. But that was definitely like a, well, okay, here we go. Let's see how he's doing up there. You just made me feel so much better. I soloed in a Piper Warrior That's what I fly a long, right long time ago. My first attempt at solo landing was a go-round. <laughs> and I distinctly remember I was stupid high. And I'm trying to slip it to get down. And I'm still stupid high on yeah. final. And I'm like, this is dumb. It just doesn't look good. try it again. And I never actually thought, until this moment, I never thought about it from my instructor's Oh, person. yeah. The way. I probably was thinking I might have made a mistake here. Yeah. Well, and his parents were there and his sister. So they look at me like, is everything okay? And I'm like, keep it cool, Hunter. Stay cool. Everything's fine. He did exactly what he should have done on the, on the internal. I'm like, keep it cool, Hunter. Everything's fine. So <laughs> it's a lot I of adrenaline it. on that. Now, as a CFI, and this is your first CFI job, right? Yes. Have you been fortunate enough to find or seek out a mentor or have you established people in your life, maybe your dad, maybe somebody else, mm -hmm. who you can go to for insight? Because it's getting the certificate does not mean you're good at the job. It just means you're qualified to have the job. Yeah. How have you managed that part to become the best CFI you can be and serve your clients well? Absolutely. So I have several um, and they kind of help in different realms of it. Um, you mentioned my dad. He's obviously one. I'll... I live at an untowered airport and sometimes it can get a little crazy. So I like to kind of call him and talk to him about it to make sure that I'm maybe not overreacting or, you know, that we share similar things that could have happened. Um, I'm really lucky with the people I work with. Um, I've got a really great friend there. I've got uh, several people who we just go back and forth. We're able to share that. And then once again, I'm zero away and you have just been absolutely a blessing this whole path. And even if it's just like sharing an instance, it's like celebration or to, oh, crap, man, this happened. What do you guys think about that? So I've got quite a few of those. I'm very lucky to be in the position I am, definitely. That is excellent. Now, what's, what's your ultimate goal? Are you going to stay in GA? Are you going to go to corporate or airlines? Or are you not sure yet? You're just enjoying the journey. A little bit of both. Um, I'm thinking charter, um, probably 135. My dad currently, he's flying for NetJets, and I know that's that's the goal I have right now. I want to get there before he retires. So I'm hoping to get there, fly a little bit with him, just to, you know, fly with my dad actually in like the, the, the corporate world. But then once he retires, which will be about like five years or so, we're going to see what's best for me. So when that comes, but right now I have a stepping stone between that jets. There's a few regionals I'm looking at at the moment. Um, I think come December, I'll be flying a Pilatus. So that'll be a fun, yeah, like next little stepping stone, just continuing another plane on my resume. So that's exciting as well. Th that is super cool. Will that be your first turboprop experience? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, I definitely. Like now, let me ask you the weird question, and I'm sure. compelled to. Okay. <laughs> It, it used to be extraordinarily rare for a woman to be a professional pilot. And mm -hmm. a few years ago, there was about 4% of the professional pilot population were women. Mm -hmm. Now it's way up to 6%, which Ooh. is still just a tiny little thing. Big leap. Did you find being female was a challenge in any way? Do you think it was harder because you were female rather than it might be for a guy? Or did your experience suggest that flying is a meritocracy? You can do it or you can't. And mm -hmm. What's your thought? Uh, tough one. I would, if I want to look at it from the positive side, I would say either you can fly or you can't fly. I've been really fortunate that I'd say 95% of my career, it's been nothing but support from all the men that I'm, you know, and I know I'm in a man's world and that's okay. But the thing is we all love flying. So we can just relate on that. It doesn't really come down to man versus woman. I've had a few, um, not so pleasant people, unfortunately, but that just kind of comes with the gig. But overall, I would say it's definitely been a way more positive experience. And I have to do the same things you guys have to do. It's uh, There's no cheating for me. There's no side route. Like you go do spin training, you love it. I went and did it as well. So I think having that set, there's no stepping stone that I didn't also have to step on. It's been real nice. But yeah, overall, I'd say it's been pretty pleasant. I'm glad to hear that. And, you know, I asked because I'm a creepy old white dude. But <laughs> when I was in flight school, the only pushback I ever got was I had a couple flight instructors that were very Southern. And although my family's been in the South for well over 100 years, <laughs> I was viewed as a Yankee. And oh, I took gosh. a little crap for that. And I've been really fortunate. You know, I think I told you once before, I really think women are better flight students than men. 
not necessarily better pilots in the long run, but better flight students because men are combative. Men are taught to fight their way through things. And when they, they're having a little trouble, say, on final as they're learning to land, you know, they grip that yoke tighter and they try harder. And that Man just strength. Makes it worse. Yeah. Had a few of those where they have fight me on the controls. And I'm like, I'm trying to take it for, for a reason. Like, please relinquish <laughs> them. I need those. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, that was one of my big challenges. I had two students where I'd say my airplane and they'd say, no, no, I got it. And it's like, it's not a suggestion or a <laughs> request. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've got it. <laughs> yeah, no, I think overall I had one. Well, I, I can't tell. I'd like to think it was just he was very stressed at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. Soft field takeoff. You know, when you push that nose over the first couple of times you see it, it's very intimidating. And people are definitely hesitant to get in that ground effect. And if you don't, we're going to fall out of the sky. And he just yanked back at like 35 knots in the Piper Warrior. And I went, holy crap. And I shoved the nose over. He's like, what are you doing? And I was like, saving our lives. So he, he was a little upset with me for the next couple of minutes. But then I explained to him, I was like, look, you know, I don't, I don't try to take over unless I have to. I had to take over on that one. I was like, I'm here to keep you safe as well as myself. And once we had that uh, conversation, he... His moods lightened up a little bit, but I think he was a little sour that I had to step in. It's like, that's okay. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, actually, that's great learning material because, you know, the only time the examiner, when you go on your check ride, is going to get involved is if it's a safety issue. Mm -hmm. And you do have to learn that. I actually, I've had one person I've signed off for a check ride who didn't completed that, yeah. that it was not a successful completion yeah. and it was that they were very successful pilot but they flew helicopters and they were yeah. really aggressive rotating to get off the ground um, same thing they'd be climbing at 37 knots and you know stall speeds 34 so yeah. that's not going to work out great no how about hunter have you found any regrets to this path, you know, you're in a, as you said, you're kind of in a man's world and you're doing extraordinarily well and you've been really successful, but have there been any things that surprised you or anything that you sort of regret about it? Or has it overall just been, I'm so glad I took this path. I think I go with overall, just so glad I took this path. Um, so side story, it's going to make sense. I promise. Um, at my flight school, apparently I'm known for the power off one eighties. I can hit it every time on those thousand footers. I don't care what the wind's doing, this and that. And I went home and was talking to my husband the other day about it. He's like, you used to hate power off when he was. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you were like traumatized from those. So I think I just put that like at the back of my brain, like all like the tough things that I had to go through, like the crappy moments or the not getting a maneuver, things like that. To where I sit right now, I don't really see any of that negative. I just see the positive and like how excited I am to be here. Um, well, one thing I would maybe change is not flying at an untowered airport. I'm in the top five busiest airports of Pennsylvania, and the two of them are Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. So it's very, very busy. And sometimes when you've got a lot of new flight instructors or students, it can get a little crazy at times. But then the positive I look from that angle is I am training in a very, very difficult area, very demanding one. So I was able to build that skill from it. So even though people may do things that I'm not a fan of, at the end of the day, it heightens my social awareness and my situational awareness, and it becomes a perk, even though in the moment it's kind of scary. It can be a little crazy. So I, I got to commend you on that, because I did the same thing. I did my primary training in airspace that's now class Charlie with a Bravo overlying. It was really intense airspace. Yeah. And that seemed exceptionally challenging, especially when I went into instrument training. Ooh. But the great thing was when I got up north to fly in New York Center airspace, it didn't seem like a problem. Whereas Please. someone who learns at a very rural airport, and there's nothing wrong with that, but yeah. you know, you're out in Iowa at a non-towered field, it's grass maybe, mm -hmm. you can really feel overwhelmed when you get into a controlled airspace where there's a lot of traffic and a lot of radio chatter. So there's yeah. probably an upside to that. As you say, you adjust to it, but mm -hmm. you become better for it. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would love if they would put a tower in at the current airport I'm flying, but they say that's like five years down the road. So that won't really be a help for me anytime soon. But just in general, how busy it is, it's one of those ones that I think they should put in, at least make it a delta or something. <laughs> just anything to make it not as crazy, you know? So I get it. Well, let me ask you this, because you're a CFI and you're doing fabulously well. Oh, thank you. If somebody came to you, whether they were 16 or whether they were 60, 
whether they're male or female, whatever the case may be, and said, I, I'm thinking of learning to fly. Can you give me any insight? What's your general message to somebody like that? Do, is it worth it? Can they do it? Absolutely. Yeah. So I think my general message would be, if you're truly committed to it, absolutely do it. I see a lot of people who will come in and waste a good bit of money on something that they thought they might not, they thought they would do it and then they flaked out. So I say if it's something you're into, go get that discovery flight, go hang out at the airport, just talk to anyone, even if you just want to talk on the phone about airplanes for an hour, just getting your toes wet before fully committed to it. So you can, if it's not something you're sure you want to do, you can kind of know before you put a big you know, debt in your pocket. But if you know this is a goal of yours, absolutely. Go on Facebook. There are plenty of groups. We know we love M's your way. Um, and just reach out to people. There's, and it's such a positive group, aviation in general. I mean, everyone is so helpful and wants to share it with others. So yeah, if, if you're curious about it, I would definitely do a little bit of research, find someone to talk to, go hang out at an airport, do a discovery flight, any of those options, and then, you know, see about taking some lessons and go from there. Yeah, you know, I, I really appreciate you saying that because so many people, well, not to sound rude, but they're somewhat ignorant about the process. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that there really is effort involved. It's, oh, yeah. I mean, a child can fly an airplane. It's not hard. But to fly it well and mm -hmm. to build the body of knowledge you need to be safe, that takes real effort. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have that going for you. But you're absolutely right. So many people in aviation reflect on their own entry into the industry. They're more than happy to help if you're mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So go to the airport, hang out, talk to people, grab a Coke and watch people take off and land. Mm -hmm. Get to know the CFIs. Do something that gets you into that milieu if i may use a big fancy word <laughs> and um you know take it from there because some people get that first flight and they go yeah it's not what i thought and some people are like oh yeah That's I'm, exactly. I'm gonna do this yeah absolutely and then just having that experience there like well i have mentioned earlier like i always knew i wanted to fly but i didn't start flying until i was 25 because i knew how expensive it was and it didn't have the money at the time. And in a way I was a young college kid. I just wasn't like mentally ready to do it. So if you're going to commit to it, like you need to be like ready to go for it. Um, instead of, you know, just putting that dent in your pocket that later on you're like, Oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. So just being emotionally aware of what it actually requires to become a pilot and move forward with it. How about to be a CFI when you go to work? Are th is there any advice you can give somebody that maybe is where you were two years ago? right around their commercial, or maybe they've got their instrument and they're thinking about it. What advice do you have for somebody that's thinking about becoming a CFI? Um, I think it's extremely rewarding and beneficial. And something people always said that in hindsight, it's like, oh yeah, they were so right. But they're like, you don't really become a pilot until you're a CFI. And gosh darn it, were they so true? Like the commercial pilot I was a year ago, I've been a CFI for about a year to where I am now is just exponential. So it definitely helps you as a pilot to become, but I think advice I would give to them is remember it's about, it's about you, but it's about them as well and helping them out. I've got a really good group where I work and we'll switch around students. There's like a primary flight instructor, but we'll bounce them around constantly. And, you know, just to give them other perspectives. Sometimes if I can't explain something in the way that you might need it after two or three lessons of us trying to get it, there's nothing wrong with someone else taking a look at the situation, a look at the theory. I've had them come to me and they're like, oh man, he can't get his lane. I was like, he didn't know where center line was. Simple as that. Within five minutes, I was like, what's good? Just being able to pick out those little tidbits. So not being protective of your students and understand it's what's best for them. We're here to help them succeed and let them move forward. If you're, if you're hit a hump, maybe someone else is uh, what it takes to get over that, you know, aspect and help them progress. I love hearing you say that because I think one of the things we forget as CFIs is that our success is measured by the success of our students. Absolutely. It's not about the thickness of our logbook or the size of our checking account. If they're not succeeding, if that person sitting to our left isn't getting it, mm -hmm. we're not getting the job done. It's yeah. about serving them. Yeah. And also understanding though, like it's their money. I always tell people if we're flying and we're getting the crap kicked out of us or, you know, if they get real frustrated, I was like, look, you pay a lot of money to hang out with me. If we're not having fun, why are we doing this? If you know, if you're just having a bad day and you said, you know what, we do two hour blocks, shit, or I'm If we hit an hour and he says, do you know what, Connor, I've just, I've had a day, my head's on in it. I have never gotten mad at someone. I've been like, 
that's my money. What do you, it's like, no, you are spending so much to hang out with me. If you're not gaining anything from it, we need to change it up and we need to look at what's going to help you out. Absolutely right. I actually, I had a really interesting experience when I was a young CFI and you do learn so much as a CFI. Mm -hmm. I was flying with a guy who had been an instructor at the Air Force Academy, flew F-15s in Okinawa. I mean, he was really experienced. Mm -hmm. Wow. He had a multi-engine ATP, no single engine. So I was working with him to get a single commercial so he could fly with his family. Yeah. And we're flying a Piper Arrow. And one day we're up there and it's just moderate chop. It's just really uncomfortable. Not unsafe, but we're just bouncing along and yeah. we're doing commercial maneuvers. And he stopped and said, you know, I know this isn't unsafe, but I don't like it. And I know you don't like it. I'm going to cut it short. We're going to go home. Absolutely. Great. Mm-hmm. 100%. I mean, if you're not having fun, why would you do it? It's so stinking and expensive to be other. And then if you're in that mindset of you're not having, you're, you're not fully focused on it. A little bit of turbulence is one thing. And as you get more and more experienced, you know, what to you might seem normal might be still a little intense for me. But if you're not fully like focused on that, then you could be dangerous or lead to something. You could miss a spot on a checklist. Just it's not fun. We should probably call it a day and come back, you know you know, a different time. I agree with you completely. Hunter, thanks so much for talking of to me course. today. Would you, uh, would you like to plug the flight school you're working at? Oh yeah. I can do. So I work at an AirQuest in Pennsylvania. Right now we're flying the Piper Warriors. We also have a Sears program. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. We've uh, been very fortunate and very successful with our students so far. And I'm, I'm just really happy to be on their team and help other people live the dream of being a pilot. So it's been very fun. Definitely. I love that. Thanks so much. Thank you we'll for catch having up me again soon, yeah. either in person or electronically. But Absolutely. thanks so much for being here. Oh, no worries. Thank you so much, Jamie. I really appreciate it. Now, I wasn't lying, was I? That was worth it. Hunter's terrific. And there are so many really good flight instructors out there at really good flight schools, big and small, towered fields, non-towered fields. Go out there and check out what your options are and look up somebody like Hunter and really make the most of your experience because as she says, if you're not having fun, why are we doing this? Y'all take care. I'll see you back here next time with some more interesting material about flight training, aircraft ownership, and the aviation lifestyle right here on your personal device.